Hello, my name is Josh from Cyclones Oz, and here is your evening update on the developing Gulf of Carpentaria tropical cyclone. There's been a big shift in the forecast post around uh, seven or eight days' time, and I'm going to be breaking that down in great detail in this update, plus also looking at the forecast for the Gulf of Carpentaria coastline by around Friday, because that's when we're expecting it to move it, um, ashore as probably a Category 1 strength tropical cyclone, the Bureau of Meteorology now also on board with that. They did a terrible job this morning initializing the low-pressure area to be south of Groot Island Island over the Gulf of Carpentaria waters, but as we can see very evidently here on the satellite imagery, that the center of the low pressure system is just towards the southeast of Catherine, and the Bureau of Meteorology have since rectified that in line with the American forecasting agencies that are also on board with this system. Uh, if you are brand new to the channel, then please do consider subscribing and also leave a like on the video while you're at it. It really does help me out, and also give me some feedback or a weather report for your location in the comment section down below. A lot of thunderstorm activity and some very strong strong convective signals now across uh, the Northern Territory, especially the northern reaches of it, basically anywhere north of Tennant Creek or Wave Hill. There are some pretty significant thunderstorms now moving through here. Those flashes indicate lightning and you can see it's very widespread. It's stretching into Western Australia as well. A brief look at the infrared satellite imagery. I know the borders are really hard to see on this imagery, but generally speaking, a lot of this thunderstorm activity is actually over land and this is housing some very heavy rainfall and we've seen that become a problem for Darwin where they've had over three 350 millimeters in the past 48 hours with probably a little bit more rainfall to come as well and what I initially expected but I really haven't uh, talked about enough is the amount of rainfall that's also expected on the Cape York Peninsula you can see I'll switch it over to the visible satellite imagery but you can see this wispy cloud through here which is strong monsoonal thunderstorms now moving ashore on the um, Cape York Peninsula that's housing some very heavy rainfall as well and a quick look at the radar imagery shows that there's quite a lot of storm activity and a lot of rain activity now across northern uh, Australia and that's associated with this developing tropical low slash tropical cyclone. It's looking a lot better than I initially thought and this might only be maybe a day or two away from becoming a fully fledged tropical cyclone which is once again it's going to give it a day extra over the Gulf of Carpentaria and conditions are very very healthy for the Gulf of Carpentaria right now and any tropical cyclone i.e. this system that could get itself over the warm waters here in a low wind shear environment could do some pretty significant intensification and that's what one forecast model is suggesting. Speaking of forecast models, let's take a peek at them right now. Uh, you can see they haven't initialized the low pressure center right now, but um, it's probably close to around the Catherine area, between Catherine and maybe uh, Nakur through here. I'm not sure how to say these um, indigenous communities' names. I'm going to refrain from saying them as much as possible to avoid butchering them, but quite a few locations through here um, is where the possible center of circulation is housed over um, and as we play this through into about Wednesday morning you can see once again about 12 to 24 hours earlier than initially expected the low pressure system emerges offshore from Robinson River south of Groot Island and then moves deeper out of the Gulf of Carpentaria before it slowly wraps itself up uh, through Wednesday and Thursday. It doesn't become a cyclone as per the Eastern Blue Bear forecast model but it still gets very close to cyclone status and will definitely be housing some gale force wind gusts through here. So Burketown uh, Karumba, Weeper as well, and Arakun will likely be receiving some cyclone winds uh, extending up towards Weeper and Thursday Island as well, or cyclone wind gusts, at least for a brief period of time associated with some heavy rain showers that will be around the centre of this storm. It should make landfall Friday evening, maybe close to Friday midnight, then move inland on Saturday and into Sunday, and that's when we get a big shift in the forecast from what we've been seeing for the last couple of days, and I'll break that down in just a little bit, but we'll take it back to its uh, time over the Gulf of Carpentaria waters. We're going to take a look at the GFS forecast model. You can see it's a very similar picture to what the Eastern Blue has and that's what I like to see. It's called model congruency. There's good connection between the major forecast models which are both looking for different things and are running off different data. So when you see model congruency like this um, it means that you can say with a high degree of certainty that this scenario is going to happen when we see this weak tropical low tropical cyclone thing move through the Gulf of Carpentaria. It's definitely going to be more of a rain threat actually. I should probably be looking the rain uh, forecast a little bit more because um, it's going to be a rain threat more than anything but once again mold congruency means that we're likely to see this scenario play out as it is being forecast right now and just quickly before I take a look at wind shear over the next five days we're expecting up to 500 millimeters to fall over some locations around Burketown and Corumba and then down towards Gregory's where we could be seeing two to three hundred millimeters Queensland looks like it's going to get the worst of the rainfall especially in far northwestern Queensland around Gregory and Burketown as well anywhere north of Mount Isa 
horizon and towards the west of Croydon could be receiving the worst of the rainfall, as I explained in more detail in uh, this morning's update. Um, but then again, we can't be ruling out up to 200 millimetres falling for some locations, especially around Nullanby uh, and Groot Island as well in the Northern Territory. We could be seeing some significant rainfall totals there. Now, we'll take a look at the GFS, and I just want to briefly talk about wind shear. Now, wind shear is the uh, speed of the wind in the upper levels of the atmosphere, um, and that um, the higher the value of the wind shear is, the more hostile to tropical cyclones uh, the environment is. Now, high wind shear generally tears tropical cyclones apart, because you can think of a tropical cyclone as a big ring of organized thunderstorms. Thunderstorms love wind shear, uh, but thunderstorms are generally quite disorganized, and for them to become very organized in a uh, cyclonic fashion, you need the, uh, need the environment to have some low levels of wind shear. Tropical cyclones are just very fascinating and very different to thunderstorms in so many ways. But they're also quite similar in the sense that they uh, like to organize themselves. And tropical cyclones like to organize themselves. And to organize themselves, they need to have low levels of wind shear. Now, where this tropical cyclone will be in the Gulf of Carpentaria, wind shear values, they're not too bad for the um, storm. I'll just have a quick look at it right now. Now, now, I know this means hardly anything to the mainstream viewer, but we're looking at wind shear values of probably around 10 knots, which aren't too bad for it, actually. It should be able to rapidly intensify with wind shear values like that. Um, but then again, if it was to be any higher than that, the cyclone will certainly be struggling to intensify. And you can see into the Coral Sea as well, very high values of wind shear. And that's normally what stops tropical cyclones in the Coral Sea. It's the high values of wind shear that we see there associated with the jet stream. The jet stream is very hostile to tropical cyclones. Now, I know I've been talking this up all video, uh, but we've got to take a look at what's going to be happening later on in this tropical cyclone's life. The access model calls for the strongest peak of this tropical cyclone in the Gulf of Carbon area, but it's not calling for what the East MWF and the GFS forecast model are calling for. The East MWF and the GFS forecast models are calling for this storm to track across the Northern Territory, not slowly, but it won't be going very fast at all. It could still be delivering some very heavy rainfall to locations around Elliott, Wave Hill, and up towards uh, down towards Docker River and Balgo Hill as well in Western Australia. Um, and then it will move through Western Australia around Fitzroy Crossing and then towards Broome. And by the end of next week, it looks like it might re-emerge off offshore into WA waters as a tropical cyclone here and it looks like it undergoes rapid intensification straight away uh, which is completely expected considering the conditions in the West Australian region are primed for tropical cyclone activity. And the GFS model quite scarily also has the exact same scenario happening as well where we see this move offshore over West Australian waters and intensifies there. Now this is concerning in the sense that the WA uh, waters are very very warm and very very conducive for tropical cyclone and genesis and intensification and this is also a very plausible track for this storm to take uh, we've seen it time and time again where we see a cyclone move through uh, northern queensland or through the gulf of carpentaria it moves across the northern territory and Western Australia is a tropical low, holding itself together through a uh, process called the Brown Ocean Effect, or a phenomenon called the Brown Ocean Effect, uh, which I've explained in previous videos. And then it moves offshore in Western Australia and rapidly intensifies there. And it can become very strong indeed. We've seen it with Tropical Cyclone Veronica, Tropical Cyclone Marcus, some historic storms uh, that have impacted WA that got very strong over WA waters, but actually originated in the Gulf of Carpentaria or even over tropical Queensland. Now, this will be a very concerning piece picture in a couple of days if we see the track following the cursor here if we see the track swing back in and impacting areas such as Exmouth, Car uh, Caratha or Carnarvon however if I was to extrapolate this considering the storm's probably got quite a significant amount of forward motion at this point it's probably just going to swing out here and die out to sea somewhere offshore from Exmouth or um, extreme western western Australia but still this is something that we really have to be watching now because um, it's a plausible scenario and we've seen it uh, being hinted on previous forecasts but I've never seen the uh, ECMWF and the GFS both come on board with it in the same forecast model run so this is going to be a very interesting scenario to watch and just to contrast that I'm going to take a look at the Access G3 model it calls for a closer track to the WA coastline from what it was calling this morning it was actually calling for it to just move into the Northern Territory and then clip extreme northwestern South Australia but the Access model actually calls for the low pressure system to be situated 
spreaded over, say, Marble Bar, Newman, that sort of area near Telfer, um, by around mid to late next week. So it's a lot closer to the coastline than initially thought. And this is what's going to drive temperatures through the roof by around next Wednesday and Thursday. I'm not looking forward to it, uh, that's for sure. It's going to be a very, very hot one indeed, I'd say, next week if this forecast was to materialise. But it looks like Perth might get a bit of westerly relief, which would be some great news indeed, because I am sick and tired of consecutive 40 degree Celsius days. And we will just take a look at rainfall from the Access G3 model just to get an idea of what could be happening across Central Australia. A widespread accumulations of up to 200 millimetres are possible. Anything higher than that seems a little bit outlandish. These deep pinks, you're looking at maybe around 400 millimetres, but I reckon that that's outlandish, especially as you get quite far into the desert around Ayers Rock um, and the Olgas. That's quite a lot of rainfall to be falling over uh, the Australian outback, that's for sure. But again, up to four to 500 millimetres around Burketown, Karumba, and up towards Weeper as well can be expected with the passage of this tropical low and tropical cyclone uh, through the Gulf of Carpentaria, especially when you see these inflow features get themselves ashore or stuck ashore on the Cape York Peninsula, you'll be seeing a lot of rainfall up there. Anyway, starting to waffle here. It's been a quick update, quick evening update. I do hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have, you can show your support by leaving a like and also subscribe to the channel while you're at it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll catch you all in the next storm. Goodbye.